What's up guys, LQ here with the LQ Review and I'm here to talk about Season 40 of Survivor. That's right, Season 40. I know we haven't even started Season 39 yet, Island of the Idols. I have my reaction video up for that, so check that out. But we're going to talk about Season 40 now because there's been some pretty big leaks come out regarding Season 40. And that is that Season 40 is something we've been wait on, waiting on for a long time, us big Survivor nerds. We've been waiting on the all-winner season, where all 16, 18, 20 players were former winners of the game. I've personally been waiting for this since Micronesia. At Micronesia, I, I said, okay, it's been 16 seasons now. We can do an all-winner season. <laughs> so I've been waiting for it since then. How long ago was Micronesia? That was a long time ago. So... Yeah, I've been waiting for an all-winter season for a long time. I've been saying this should happen, and here we are. It looks like if the leaks are true, and I think they are, we're going to get an all-winter season, which I think is a great idea. Now, we have a, a leaked cast list here uh, for the all-winter season, and uh, we're going to talk about each one of the 20 leaked names and, uh, and I'll say whether I think they're a good addition or a bad addition. I've actually ranked all 20 names from the one that I'm least excited about at number 20 all the way to the one that I'm most excited about at number one. So before I do that, let's talk about some notable absences, though. People who are not on the list of, all winter, of an all-winter season that I kind of expected to be, but aren't. First on the list, the one that I most wanted to see come back that is not coming back is Richard Hatch, the original winner. Now, I know that he's had some legal problems and that there's been some issues with him and uh, the Survivor production team and whatnot, but I still think it would have been great to work out the differences and make this happen because he is the original Survivor winner. He changed the game before it was even a game. He created this idea of alliances. He created this idea of uh, let's let's work together as a voting block to get rid of people. Richard Hatch was the original winner, and he is responsible for a lot of the survivor DNA that we uh, that we know and love today. I'd love to have seen him back. I don't think he would have been long for the game, but I would have still loved to have seen him back. Next, uh, I'm really shocked that he's not back. Is JT? JT's played a few times, and he's done well when he's played. You know, he made the stupid goof move in uh, Heroes vs. Villains. Um, he was back in Game Changers and didn't make it that far, but he's always entertaining. What JT is, is he's always entertaining, and he's always willing to make big moves. Um, he's a player. He's a gamer, and I love gamers. So I was really surprised that JT wasn't on this list as well. Number three, and I don't know why he's not on this list, but Mike Holloway. Mike was a great player. I loved watching him play, and he made his season. I still remember how entertaining he was and how much I was rooting for him, and he was the under underdog the whole way. And I just remember being so happy when he made it to the end and so happy when he won, and, you know, he has that everyman feel that I think a lot of us fans uh, can relate to. And again, Mike is somebody I would love to have seen back. I was really disappointed that he didn't make it back. Those top three right there, I think, could have easily replaced the bottom three on, on the list of contestants and would have made the season better. It, when I, we haven't even seen season 40 yet, but those three, and those three are uh, our guys, so they could have replaced the bottom three guys on the list. And I'm just looking at the bottom three guys on the list. Um... Yeah, yeah, they could have replaced those bottom three guys, and we would have ended up probably with a better season. So that's unfortunate. Uh, my number four is Tom Westman. I would like to have seen Tom back. I think he's over it, though. I think he's over it. I don't think he had a great experience during Heroes vs. Villains, and uh, I just think he's over it. But, again, he's a character that you like rooting for. He's a character you can relate to, and uh, it's too bad that uh, he's not back. But I get him. I get him. You know, I, I think that, I just think he's over it. And I think that showed a little bit in Heroes vs. Villains. So I'm not terribly heartbroken that he's not back. But I'm still a little surprised he wasn't on the list. Uh, number five, 
very surprised that she's not on the list because she's come back to play several times, and that's Tina Wesson. You know, the second winner, she was back in All-Stars, was the first voted out. She was back in Game Changers. No, not Game Changers. Um, she was back in uh, um, Blood vs. Water. So I was just really surprised that she didn't come back because she's been back a few times, and uh, she was really successful in Blood vs. Water. Really successful. Made it all the way almost to the end. So... I'm like I said. I'm I'm a little surprised that Tina's not back, especially how well liked she is by production, how well liked she is by the fans. Um, yeah, that one surprised me. And then finally, uh, Jenna Maraska. I'm not surprised that she's not back, but um, I put her on the list just because of her popularity. She's still a popular Survivor player, and and um, I guess I'm not that surprised. But maybe maybe in the back of my head, I'm just a little surprised that she wasn't on the list. Of course, Jenna quit in season in the All Star season, and they've always been pretty. And she had a good reason for quitting, a good reason for quitting. But um, they've always been pretty strict about we don't bring back quitters. So maybe I'm not all that surprised. All right, now we're gonna count down the 20 returning players. Number 20, Michelle Fitzgerald. Wasn't a big fan of her. Wasn't a big fan when she won. I didn't think she was a great player. I didn't find her very entertaining. She's on the bottom of this list. She's somebody I would have plugged Tina in that spot in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Uh, but she's on the list. So I don't think she's going to make it very far. I just don't think she's a very good player. So number 20, Michelle Fitzgerald. Number 19, Nick Wilson. Um, I don't really have any strong feelings for him. I don't really don't have any strong feelings against him. He wasn't that memorable of a winner for me anyways. And uh, so he's at number number 19. He just wasn't very memorable. And uh, I wasn't really on his team. Wasn't really on, on Team Nick. So he's number 19 for me. Number 18, Danny Boatwright. I enjoyed her when she was in Guatemala. She was not my pick to win that season. And I'm kind of just... Kind of the same with Nick. I like her a little bit more than Nick, but I'm kind of don't really care for her, don't really hate her, just kind of kind of in that middle for me. Uh, you know, she, what I can say about her is that she was an entertaining player where, uh, you know, Nick and Michelle, I wasn't all that entertained by them. So Danny's number 18. Number 17, Adam Klein. Now, I was really rooting for Adam. Uh, gosh, I think he was um, Millennials versus Gen X, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he won Millennials versus Gen X. And I remember rooting for Adam Hard. He was a good player. He was a gamer. He was likable. So I'm good with him being back. But there's a lot of bigger personalities than him and a lot of characters that are, I think, more entertaining than him. So he's near the bottom. Uh, I'm happy. I'm happy that Adam's there. But yeah, he's near the bottom for me. Um, like I said, I would have replaced uh, Nick with Rich. I would have replaced Adam with JT. But I'm not unhappy that Adam's there. He's a good player, and he was he was pretty fun to watch. He was fun to root for anyways. Number 16, Natalie Anderson. She was a player that I was never rooting for. I, 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 I was never on Team Natalie, but... She played a good game. She played a good social game. So I understand why she's on this list. She was a gamer. She played hard. And she won. Um, but I was never on her team. I was never rooting for her. But I get that she's here. So, so, And she's one of those players that could go, could go pretty far in this game just because of her strong social skills. So that's the way I see it. So... Not a huge fan of Natalie, never rooted for her. I don't imagine I'll be rooting for her in this season, but I get why she's here. 15, Wendell Holland. He was a character that everybody rooted for in his season. Everybody rooted for Wendell. He was a gamer. He was strong. He was well-likable. Everybody was rooting for him, and so was I. I'm just not thought that all excited about his return. That's why he's near the bottom. That's why he's at 15. Just not all excited about his return. Yeah, I remember rooting for him. I remember liking him. I remember thinking he's a good player. But 
just not excited for him returning. That's all. Nothing against him. I think he's going to do fine in the season. I think he's another one of those guys. Another one of those guys that he could go far because he's a strong gamer. Well, like he's very likable, and he doesn't have a massive target on his back like some some of these people at the top. So I can see Wendell going a long ways. Number fourteen, Sarah Lucina. Um, the cop that won Game Changers and stole it out from under Brad Culpepper. Brad Culpepper should have won that season, and Sarah got it. But uh, So Sarah's at, Sarah's at number 14. Not a huge Sarah fan, but she's a player. She's a player, and you got to give that to her. She's a player. Um, but I definitely was rooting for Culpepper in her season. So maybe she's at the bottom just because I'm, a little still bit, I'm still a little bitter about that one. So number 40, Sarah Lachina. Number 13, Denise Stapley. Denise Stapley. Now, Denise was a very good player. She was a very strategic player. Thought out every move that she made well in advance and executed very strongly. Um, very under-the-radar type of player. I think that... She's either going to go a long ways or she's going to be out early. But one of the strong suits about her is that she's a listener. And if I remember right, she's a therapist. If I remember right, that, that's her, that's her uh, profession as a therapist. So it makes sense that she's a listener. But she listens to people. And she forms those strong bonds by just listening. And that's something that can get you far in Survivor. So I either think she's going to make it a long ways or she's going to be out early because she's going to be looked at as a as under the radar threat. I could see people looking at her and saying, "I remember how she played. We don't want to give her a chance to get to, to get a foothold. We got to get rid of her." So I could see that, or I could see her going a long ways because, like I said, she's very social, very strategic, and she listens. So, number thirteen, Denise Stapley. <laughs> number twelve, Ben Drybergen. I think that's how you say his last name. I don't know, but I love him. He was very entertaining, very comedic, very hard, likable player. And I think, what was his season? His season was uh, um, the blue collar. No, his was healers versus hustlers. Um, the healers hustler season, whatever that one was called. He was great. He was great. I loved Ben. He was very dynamic. Very, uh, he was a character. He was a character. And that's what I like about, you know, if they're not a player, if they're not somebody who's playing hard, at least be a character. And he was both. He played hard and he was a good character um, that made for good TV. So Ben, number 12. All right, next is number 11. And now we're getting into some of the players that I'm really looking forward to seeing. Number 11 is Jeremy Collins. Man, he was a good player. He deserved to win his season hands down. And I'm glad that he won. And I can't wait to see him come back. I'm pretty sure that his vote was unanimous for his uh, victory, if I remember right. But man, Jeremy was so much fun to watch. He was so easy to root for. He was a, he was a great Survivor player. Can't wait to get Jeremy back and see if he can repeat that magic. Because he was really good. Uh, number 10, Kim Spradlin. All right, here's the deal with Kim. She won One World, and she was the only player in One World who was any good at all. So, I mean, the way that she won One World was reminiscent of Boston Robin Redemption Island. She just owned it from day one. She owned it. So, the question is, is Kim that good? Or was she just up against a bunch of goats? We're going to find out in season 40 if Kim was really that good or if she was just up against a bunch of goats. And I think that's going to be a fun storyline to watch. Number nine. This is going to be interesting, and we'll get to why this is interesting soon. But number nine is Amber Mariano. So Amber won All-Stars. She won All-Stars largely because she wasn't Boston Rob. I think that Boston Rob deserved to win All-Stars. But she won it because he was he took all the heat. He took all the heat. He took all the anger. And, uh, and she was the vote that um, she was the least objectionable person who was sitting in the final tribal council as far as the jury was concerned. So she won. I'm not saying that she wasn't a gamer. I'm not saying she didn't play hard. I'm not saying she didn't play well. But Boston Rob, I think, should have won that season. And she won kind of by default. But 
this is going to be an interesting season because somebody that she knows very well is also playing. So it'll be interesting to see if she's on the same tribe as this person or if they're on different tribes. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. I'm really looking forward to that storyline. But Amber is number nine. Number eight, some of you are going to be surprised that she's so low. As, a, as if number eight out of 20 is low. But number eight is Sandra Diaz Twine. The only two-time winner in Survivor. Will she make it three wins? I don't think so. I think she's going to be an early target because people aren't going to want to see her get a foothold. I don't think people are going to want to see her get a chance to win it three times. But as much as I don't think she deserved to win um, Survivor Heroes vs. Villains, I think that was Parvati's game. I think Parvati deserved to win it. I think Parvati was the best player in Heroes vs. Villains. So as much as I don't think she deserved to win Heroes vs. Villains, you can't deny her gameplay solid. You know, her gameplay is, as long as it's not me, I'm a vote. And I don't know if that gameplay will work with players of this caliber. We'll have to wait and see. But one thing is for sure, she, she seems to be a likable person. Because the players, if she wasn't likable, players would just want to get rid of her. And she's made it far every time she's played, except for in Game Changers. And she still made it farther in Game Changers than I thought she was going to. So, Sandra, I don't think is going to make it far. I think she's going to be an easy, quick out. But she's going to be entertaining to watch. She's always entertaining. Number seven, Sophie Clark. Sophie is another one of those dark horse winners. Like, if they let her get a foothold, she could go a long ways. Now, when she won, I wanted Coach to win. I thought that Coach showed us so much growth in uh, Survivor South Pacific, and I thought that he played a great game, but I couldn't really disagree with her win either. Either, either one of them were, were, uh, were um, the right choice for, to be the winner. So... I think that she's a player where if they let her get a foothold, she's going to go a long ways. So she's going to either be an easy out or somebody who's going to make it all the way to to the last all the way to the last part of the season. Number 6, Tyson, Tyson Apostle. Tyson is incredibly entertaining. Um, I was actually really surprised that he won Blood versus Water really surprised because he made such a ding dong move in heroes versus villains that uh, I was like, I'm not sure if this guy has any strategy, has any strategic capability, but he showed that he does. And maybe that's just growth on his part. You know, he, after playing the game a few times, blood versus water, he got it and he did well. And he, he rode that to the end. I think it also helps that his uh, girlfriend got voted out really early in blood versus water and he was able to just, now it's my game. I don't have to worry about her. This is just me. Um, so I think that probably helped a little bit as well. Now we're in the top five. The top five, I am so excited about each one of these players coming back. And if any one of these five wins, I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be a happy camper because I love, these are, this top five are probably all five in my list of top ten favorite players of all time. So if any one of these five win, I'm going to be ecstatic. Number five, Yul Kwan. Yul, I'm so happy that he's back. I never thought he would be back. I don't know why. I just never thought that they'd get him to come back. Yul was a great player. Yul is one of the great winners of Survivor where he owned it. He owned it, and he made several strategic decisions to get him further in the game, and he just, it was his season. And he was in a season with some big personalities. You know, he was in a season with Parvati. He was in a season with Ozzy. He was in a season with big personalities, and he still owned the season. It was his. He controlled it. So I'm, I'm really happy that Yule's back. I want to see him elevate his gameplay. I think he's a real threat to win twice. I really do. Uh, because he's so strong, and he's so social and likable, but just so strong of st strategic and physical player. I definitely could see Yule going deep into this game. Number four, Ethan Zahn. I'm so happy that he's back. With the struggles that he's had, the life that he's had, 
I'm so happy that he's back. You know, he won Africa. I was a huge fan of his in Africa. Uh, he was the last winner standing in All-Stars. And then after All-Stars, he had cancer. And he fought cancer. And he beat cancer. But then you look at what he's done with his life. Starting these youth soccer programs. Giving his life back to kids. And man, if anybody's more... De there's nobody more deserving to be on Survivor again than Ethan. He is a true, real-life survivor. So I'm, I'm ecstatic that he's back, and I really hope that he makes it a long way because he's just a, not only is he a good player, not only is he a good winner, he's just a good person. So I'm really happy that he's back, and he's sitting at number four for me. Number three, one of my favorite players of all time, and my opinion might be the best player of all time. There's a few that you could have in that discussion, but Parvati. Parvati Shallow, she is a fantastic player, she is super entertaining, and she knows the game, and not only is she a strong player, not only does she know the game, not only is she entertaining, but she is a survivor character, right? You think about survivor, and she's one of the first names that come to mind, she's a survivor character. She's an all-star in every sense of the word as far as survivors are concerned, and it would not be a winter season without her coming back. So I'm super thrilled that she's here, and I, I genuinely hope that she makes it a long way because she's just that that much fun to watch. Um, so Parvati's number three. Number two. This is going to get a lot of people just uh, angry, but Boston Rob. Boston Rob's number two. He's one of my favorite players of all time. And I know that people like roll their eyes and they're like, Boston Rob again. Uh. There's a reason they keep bringing Boston Rob back. As I talked about in the Idols, Island of the Idols video, he brings ratings. People like to watch him. Us nerds, survivor nerds who watch YouTube videos and go to Facebook sites and, and follow them on Instagram and all this, we make up like 3% of the viewing population. Most of the viewing population loves having these characters back, and Boston Rob is one of them. They love having Boston Rob back, and when he's back, more viewer, more people watch Survivor. So that says something about him as a player, as him as a character, and I just can't wait, can't wait to see what he brings to the show. Now, there's going to be a new dynamic. This is going to be, I think, the first time outside of a blood versus water season that we're going to have a husband and wife playing together. I expect they're going to be on separate tribes, but even if they're not, even if they are, how is that going to play out? So that's going to be interesting. I don't expect Amber and Rob to make it far in the game. One of them is going to go early. Which one? I don't know. We'll see. But um, I'm ecstatic that Rob is back. Just ecstatic. I love watching him play Survivor. And he is one of my favorite players of all time. So I'm not even necessarily sure if I'm rooting for him to win at this point. But I'm just thrilled that he's back. Because he brings a lot to the game as a fan, as a viewer, as somebody who just likes good TV and good storylines. I'm thrilled that he's here. But number one for me. Number one. My, one of my, he might be my favorite player of all time. And that's Tony Vlachos. Love Tony plays so hard, he plays so sarcastically, he's very strategic, uh, very um, abrasive. Um, Tony is just a hard player. Because of him, Survivor Kagiyan was one of the best seasons of all time. I was bummed that he got voted out, was it first or second in uh, Game Changers, but he is a dynamic, exciting player to watch. And I just love him. Uh, I hope we see Spy Shack, Shack 3.0. And I hope that we see Tony just running around, hunting for idols, being crazy. And he's like a... He's kind of like a um, socially... How do I say this? He's kind of like a Russell Hance only he has social skills. That's what he is. He's Russell Hands with social skills. So I really like Tony a lot. Part of me doubts he's going to make it deep into the game, but man, I hope he does because he's so entertaining. He's so much fun to watch, and he's just a good survivor player. So there they are.
the 20 players who are coming back and uh, six players that aren't coming back that I kind of was surprised that they aren't. But the 20 that are coming back, what do you think of them? Let me know in these comments down below. Let me know who you think is going to win, who has the best shot at going on. Which player that's coming back maybe you wish wasn't coming back, that you're just tired of seeing or don't think they deserve that spot or whatever. Let me know in the comments down below. I'm super excited about this winter season. Been waiting for it for a long time. We really don't know what the theme is going to look like. I assume it's going to be a winter-related theme. But, yeah, I can't wait to get my eyes on this season. It's going to be uh, spring of 2020. So keep an eye out for that, the all-winter season. And let me know what you think of it. Thank you for being here at the LQ Review, where we talk about all the geeky, all the nerdy stuff that we love to talk about. And until next time, we'll see you later.